So we use these medical terms interchangeably, but they're actually three completely different health issues affecting the heart. Consultant cardiologist Dr. Andrew Chung is here to explain the difference between a heart failure, a heart attack, and a cardiac arrest. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Really Rebel. good to see you. Hope the year has started well, and I pray that it's going to be your best. Thank you. Interestingly, just before we get specific, I said to um, Dr. Chung, why cardiology in the first place? And your answer was, it's logical. Yes, what it's does logical. That mean? What does that mean? You can see how one thing follows the other when you learn about the structure of the heart and the function of the heart. The ways in which the heart can fail or become diseased is a logical progression. So it's easy to figure out. And after that, it's just practice. Wow. Never heard it put like that, but that makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? I said at the, the start, heart failure, heart attack, cardiac arrest, all three different things. That's right. All three can kill you. Yes. All three, um, for some not come together, but they're, they're related. They're related. They can be related. Let's start. A heart attack or sudden cardiac arrest. How are they different? So cardiac arrest is really a sudden unexpected loss of cardiac function. So literally your heart stops and it usually is due to an abnormal heart rhythm called ventricular fibrillation in which you're getting very rapid or erratic heartbeats, mm -hmm. but they're not effective. So instead of the heart pumping like this, it's just sort of quivering, so there's no effective pumping action. The function of the heart is to pump, so if the heart is no longer pumping, you get loss of function. But that's not a heart attack. That's not a heart attack. A heart attack can lead on to a cardiac arrest, but you can have a cardiac arrest without having had a heart attack. Which one is worse? Or, well, <laughs> or... when, you, when you have a cardiac arrest, you have no heart function, so that's the worst. Because a heart attack, you could, you could... You can survive a heart attack, that's right. Wow. Oh, so you told me what a cardiac arrest is. Mm -hmm. So the link, because you said you could have one without the other, what, what's the, what's, what's right. the link? Right, so a heart attack is when you have sudden blockage of blood flow to a part of the heart muscle so that you get damage to the heart muscle. And by definition, you must have some damage to the heart muscle for us to call it a heart attack. Now, if you damage the heart muscle, you can trigger an abnormal heart rhythm and you can have a cardiac arrest. So, you know, 50% of people who have heart attacks don't even survive to make it to hospital or to medical attention. And those are the people who tend to have this abnormal heart rhythm shortly after they have the heart attack and they drop down and die. And they never even make it to the doctor. So a heart attack can lead on to a cardiac arrest, but people can have a heart attack, survive, get to doctor, and then they can go on to have other problems from there on, but you don't have to have a cardiac arrest. So let me just um, give you an example. Those unfortunate incidents, for example, of schoolboys collapsing on the field, with which you're familiar, that would be a cardiac arrest, but not necessarily a heart attack. Their heart stopped functioning suddenly. My mom had a, obviously before she died, she had a pain in her chest. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we thought it was kind of gas yes. kind of thing. <laughs> Give her some tea, mm -hmm. didn't stop. Mm -hmm. And she called me and I took her to the hospital. Right. Took her in and the doctor came out and says, take her home. Mm -hmm. On her way home, he called me and says, take her to the hospital. Because the blood test showed that she had been having a heart attack. What, why would that, why would you not know that at the, t at the time? Well, there are signs that may be there, for example, on the ECG. Um, or from the history that the patient gives that might clue you in and say, let me keep this person, watch them. But sometimes if those aren't so certain and they do the blood test because they're not so certain about it, the blood test comes back later and it shows, yes, there's evidence of heart damage. So that person needs to be brought back in to be kept under observation and treated as a heart attack. Well, what do you do if you think you're having a heart attack? What do you do? Get to medical attention as soon as possible. Outside of that, mm -hmm. um, and, and I, expected, a, take, I, I expected that answer, but is there anything I, I read one time or someone sent it to me if you think, say, you must cough or something like that? No, that's not effective. But chew and swallow an uncoated aspirin, a full-strength aspirin. Chew it and swallow it. It starts the anti-clotting effect to help to prevent further clotting within the blood vessels of the heart, which is what gives you a heart attack ultimately. Yeah. So that you can do for sure. Are there different feelings you get if you're having a heart attack or everybody just get a stab in pain? No, oh, they're very varied. The typical classic presentation is that sudden pressing or sharp pain that you get in the chest. But some people have very subtle signs, particularly women. It may be very um, subtle. It may not be pain at all. You may just feel unwell or you feel faint or you feel like gas, indigestion, heartburn. 
So it can be very different. It doesn't have to be in the chest. It can be up in the throat. It may be just in one or both arms. Hold on one second. You could be having a heart attack and the pain is in your throat? Absolutely. Why? Because of how when we develop as little embryos, the nervous system, um, you can have nerves that supply different areas of the body when you're an embryo, but as you grow up, it differentiates, so you can still get pain or discomfort going to those areas and oh. not the specific area. And I've also from. heard that you might get pain in the jaw or in the arm yep. or something like that. That's true. And not in the chest. That's true. And diabetics may get no pain at all because there are nerves that have been affected oh, by the diabetes. Man. So, so what you're looking know. for is a difference in how you feel. Yeah. And if you feel yeah. like there's something going on, people will tell you they have this sense of impending doom. Get to the doctor. Okay. Did we touch heart failure? No, we didn't what touch heart failure. What is heart failure? So heart failure doesn't mean your heart has stopped. It's a syndrome in which the heart is not pumping well enough to keep the blood and fluid circulating around the body as it should. So you tend to feel fatigued and you may blow short, as Jamaican people say, and you may swell because you're not circulating that as it should because the heart isn't pumping well. That's mm -hmm. heart failure. Ah, is there anything that brings on a heart problem? Anything that... There, uh, that there are many things that do. And the things like hypertension, which one in four Jamaican people have, diabetes can affect the heart and cause these problems. Um, being overweight, sedentary lifestyle, having this blood vessel disease in the heart, all of those things can bring on these three syndromes. What about um, family? Family history, of course. If you have people in your family who have had heart attacks early, like men before the age of 50 and so on, um, then you're at greater risk as well. If you have high cholesterol, if you smoke cigarettes, if you don't exercise, these all increase your risk of having these heart problems. Uh, I, I, I ask this question seriously mm -hmm. um, because you said if you smoke cigarettes, you didn't say if you smoke. We, well, we, we, don't, do we don't have as much data to link smoking, for example, ganja, directly to that. Of course, we don't believe smoking anything is good for you and certainly not for your lungs. But we don't have direct evidence to link that to like heart attacks. But cigarettes certainly Definitely, does. Definitely, absolutely. Alcohol? Mm, to some extent, not directly, but alcohol, if you drink excess amounts of alcohol, that can actually damage your heart muscle directly and lead on to heart failure. Yeah. I, again, I don't know if you, if you know this, but they've brought in what they call e-cigarettes, oh, yeah. which I think is, is what? That's vapor, right? I, I think. Yes, that's a vaping. And Still does, has, that, does that hurt also? It hurts the lungs. There's evidence it hurts the lungs and that young people are becoming addicted to this. And young people who may not have started cigarette smoking because it's easy and it's available. And there are lots of things that have come out. There's an article recently that linked it to increased risk of stroke. So these are not benign Weed. things. No, the e-cigarettes. The e-cigarettes. The e-cigarettes. E e that link it to, to strokes. Um, whew, how would it damage the lung, though, if it's... You're inhaling stuff. There's, still, there's vapor. These things still have some amount of nicotine in them, or those small amounts that you get in cigarettes. And there are other... Um, substances that are involved in the vapor. So anything that's not meant to be going down into our air passages really shouldn't go yeah. down there. I smoked for 40 years. I finished for 20 years. Excellent. Do you get it back? I wasn't really yes. talking about me, but yes. does it clear up? Yes. There is evidence that certainly from the point of view of stroke and heart attacks, when you stop smoking cigarettes after about five years, your risk of having a heart attack goes back to that of someone who's never smoked. Okay. And after 10 years, your risk of stroke goes back as well. But oh. your lung disease, what you've already developed, that won't go away, but you reduce the risk of okay. you know, further damage. All right, let's, let's recap. What's a heart attack? It's sudden damage to the heart muscle because you've blocked off the blood supply. Cardiac arrest? Sudden loss of function, so the heart stops pumping. Heart failure? Reduced function of the heart, so it cannot supply the needs of the body. And they all could kill you. And they all could kill you. And February is heart month, Neville, so yep. it's a good time to, for us to start thinking about our heart. Okay, fantastic. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, you know your stuff. Consultant cardiologist who tells me that uh, it's, what, what did you say? It's logical. Uh, <laughs> Cardiology is logical. I like that, Dr. Andrew Jung. 10 minutes to your health, folks. We'll do it again next Thursday.